fish and shrimp keepers of all ages. Welcome to Wild Fish Tanks Live. Have a good stream for you guys playing today. We got our outline again. We're talking about fish foods. We're going to be taking um, questions and answers. So welcome to everybody in the chat. Um, David Rodriguez, Scott Backer, Rockford Fish Keeping, Caleb Aquatics, Michael with Bay Area Aquatics, Kyle Knudsen. How's everybody doing this evening? Um, got a nice little outline here. We're going to be covering different fish foods. I got a bunch of different fish foods that I use. We're going to be talking about some that um, have worked better than others. We're going to be talking about you know some that work better for some of the plecos I have, some that work better for the guppies I just got, and some of the different fish you may keep. Um, I want to talk about frequency in feeding, how often I feed, how often I recommend you feed for different things, feeding just a feed versus if you have um, goals of breeding and conditioning and feeding fry, and then also like feeding on vacation, automating feeding, kind of my opinions on that, how I feel about that, um, and then like I said, answering answering all your questions. Thanks everybody for joining us tonight. Steam Font, hey, what's going on, Bob? Warrior Planted Tanks. Hey, what's up, Steve, man? Sorry, I missed your call earlier. We did play a little phone tag. Hey, uh, Tracy Ann. Hey, Candy. Hope everyone's having a good evening. I kind of like these Wednesday nights, kind of a midweek. I don't know if you guys work Monday through Friday. I'm kind of a Monday through Friday guy. Hey, Chewy. So these Wednesdays are a nice break, nice break in the uh, the week. My week's doing you know, busy, but all right so far. Hope your guys is doing well also. Hey, Steve's Aquatics. Um... I broke it down kind of by different types of food, roughly, you know, flake, you know, manufactured food, and then some non-manufactured food. I'm a big fan of, obviously, live foods, and we'll talk about some veggies and human food that we feed our fish, some of my favorites. Um, but flake first, I actually start with um, one of the foods that has kind of a bad rap is Wardley. I think there was a comment before the stream even started, and... It was about how bad Wardley fish food is. I actually don't have any right now. Um, and that's not because I haven't used it in the past. About a year ago, I bought for $10, $15 on OfferUp, like 20 different cans of Wardley fish food, just their basic flake food. And I fed it to almost every fish in the fish cave for months and months and months. And just recently that I run out of that food. Now, I'm not trying to say that Wardley fish food is the best food ever, but... I will say that I use that food. It didn't kill my fish. Um, maybe it's not the greatest food out there, and I definitely recommend some other foods above it. Um, but it was cheap. It was you know a budget option for me, and you know it was okay. Um, hey, lumpy dog, who's this handsome fella talking about fish? I don't know, man. You talking in the mirror to yourself about fish again? Um, now that you have guppy strains, are you going to try your own strain? Ooh, I don't know, man. I, I'm gonna try to work on a strain of antlers that I have. But I have a fish friend, Jose, who likes to work with live bearers, and I think he's got a few cool strains he's trying to work on, like actually create something new and different. So I'll leave that up for him. I'll leave that up for him for now. Um, but some of the fish foods, some of the flake I've been feeding lately is this uh, Sarah food. Let's see, it's a little camera. There we go. A little better. Uh, this Sarah flake food. Um, I enjoyed it a lot. My fish went crazy for it. Um, I, have, I, I can't say anything bad about it, to be honest. It didn't cloud the water too much. The flakes are kind of green. They're not uh, different colored flakes. Um, but I would definitely, you know, buy this flake food again. Um, I had no qualms with it. It's actually, of all the flake food I've used, and I've used recently um, this Guppy Tropical Flake from Cobalt. Um, I think they're a sponsor. Um, I appreciate how they support local fish clubs. Um, I know that there's been a few times at the Tampa Aquarium Society where Cobalt products have been given away uh, for free, uh, kind of little trial sizes. And I've been feeding this to the guppies, and they seem to like it. Um, this food is kind of a little more a crispier flake, like a thicker flake than the, than the Sarah. I like this one. It kind of um, crunches up smaller, better, in my opinion. And I do that a lot. Uh, big shout out to Rob93. Hope your stream went well. If you guys don't know, um, before we go live at 8 p.m. Eastern, Rod93 Aquatics goes live from 7 to 8. So if you guys are ever looking for something to do between 7 and 8 on Wednesdays, definitely go check out Rod93 Aquatics for sure. Um, to be honest, flake food is not one of my favorite types of food in general to feed. I know it's mostly like everyone's basic go-to, and I feed it kind of as a default, as a backup. 
but my go-to foods typically are going to be pellets um and then you know my, my go-to manufactured foods i should say uh, would be pellets and maybe not in the way you're thinking one of my favorite i call it a pellet food um that's aquarium co-ops fry food i've had this bottle since at least valentine's day when i did a video kind of highlighting it um, i got a lot of food or a lot of fish that i feed this to and as you can see it's only about half gone i mean i use this food almost every day and i've multiple times a day the guppies have been getting a lot of this recently and you know i think it's amazing i, I think the smaller the better in general one of the the biggest flake i have the biggest flake i have or the biggest pellet i should say i have right now is the sinking gold cichlid food by hikari and you'll notice i i do love hikari foods all the frozen foods i use are hikari this pellet my cichlids don't eat it my cichlids my lake tank and eating cichlids they will not eat this pellet however i do use this pellet for the plecos for whatever reason one of my plecos favorite prepared slash manufactured foods is this hakari sinking gold cichlid food which is you know it was just one of those things i was not expecting my cichlids weren't eating it i was like let me throw it in the pleco tanks and they they um they ate it all up um david rodriguez says aside from any black worms do you raise any other live foods yes i do we're gonna get to that it's a great question um thank you candy yes at me for the questions uh chewy says what are your thoughts on live food versus processed and frozen foods in general i think that they all have their place i don't feed uh live and frozen foods every single feeding although i say it makes up more than 50 percent of my feedings would be live frozen slash you know fresh veggies that kind of food i would say make up more than more than half of my overall feeding um also kind of in the in the realm of, of pellets i guess you can call it um the other thing that happened with this these are the fluval bug bites the pleco formula and believe it or not although my plecos did kind of casually eat this they weren't a big fan you know they tend to like um some of the other options i feed them much better uh, i'm not saying they totally avoided this food but in my opinion this wasn't the best food for my plecos um it's got some really good and good ingredients black soldier fly larva um the the big thing about this food and it's not a cheaper food this fluval bug bites is that it's got awesome ingredients and i'm not gonna lie although the most important thing is the fish eat it and my fish they didn't you could tell they didn't they didn't swarm it as much as some of the other foods but this is what it is um i think that's all oh, i guess this this will be considered a, a pellet too high akari viber bites i know this probably last year was a big you know everyone was on either side oh viber bites they're awesome all my fish eat them versus man they don't do anything um i kind of waited I, I didn't buy them when they first was a big hoo-ha last year i just picked them up for the first time um, maybe about a month and a half ago and i was pleasantly surprised all my fish seem to eat them the cichlids like them um, the smaller uh, fish will eat them the guppies um, i found a lot of success feeding the viber bites that's just my experience i've talked to some close friends that didn't have that same experience um, but like i said in my in my fish room the viber bites definitely were a hit let's see what else let's talk a little bit about um pellets because i do i do keep a lot of plecos if you guys are new i do keep a lot of plecos in the fish cave and um other than the green beans which you can kind of see back there this little mini green bean tower which is probably my favorite pleco food um these these akari algae wafers are are solid i've used these and they 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 like them my plecos tend to swarm them and another one which i think there's a stigma around this like tetra shrimp wafers i think most people would say oh those kind of a, a more budget food not as quality um, i picked up about 30 packets of these when there was a, a sale on amazon for like less than a dollar and my plecos love them you know they've got you know shrimp meal as the first ingredient and then there's some quote unquote fillers um, but it's 45 percent protein and i think it's a great food to mix in with some of the foods i consider super 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 high quality um question from warrior planted tanks do you use supplement um like nourish or dr tim's uh, aquatics i don't i don't have any experience really adding supplements to foods 
I'm not sure, Steve, if those are like um, kind of like um, some people use like Paragard or like the garlic flavoring to foods. I'm not sure if that's what that is, like an additive. I don't have much experience kind of adding those things to foods. Fiber Brights weren't my favorite. They're not bad, but eh. Yeah, I mean, like I said, to each their own. Everyone's going to have different experiences depending on your fish. Um, most of this experience comes from, you know, my, my Plecos. I've got some African cichlids. Now I've got some guppies. And I've got some community fish as well. Um, this is this segment's going to be sponsored by LRB. This is the, the Tetra Color Granules. I haven't been a huge fan of granules. I don't know why. That's just it's a me thing. A me, personally, like when I see a granule... I don't like it as much because I can't crush it like a flake if I want to get it smaller. Um, although I may, I may try to use one of those techniques to kind of use like a, a pepper grinder people use for different foods to grind it up. Um, but my fish do seem to like it. You know, um, I can use these. They, they're not super fine. The, pad, the, the powder, I guess, I can feed to my smaller fish. But I do feed these to the African cichlids. They'll eat them. My community fish and tetras will eat them. And the same thing with these is another brand of discus granules. I don't own any discus. I got this at Jack Watley Discus earlier this year. And it's they look very similar to these. They're a granule. And in my experience, you know, the fish have, have liked them both both the same. My snails and plecos love those Hakari wafers. Yeah, I've, I found those Hakari wafers. And Diva says my Hillstream loaches love those pleco wafers. Yeah, I feed those a lot to that Hillstream tank. Um, Sharon says, my plecos don't like green beans. My plecos love tetra shrimp wafers and northern kelp wafers. Hey, that's, that's, uh, that's unfortunate, I guess. I don't know. I just, I love green beans. I love feeding green beans. Um, we'll, we'll talk about the green beans now. Um, I've personally, with my bristle nose or bushy nose ancestress, I've never, never met a pleco that didn't like these green beans. Uh, I have met a pleco that didn't like cucumber or preferred zucchini or corrugate, if you guys are across the pond there, to cucumber. Um, typically the fresh veggies I feed are going to be zucchini, um, but mostly it's heavy doses of green beans. And I go to Walmart, I buy these cheap, cheap things. I get the French cut ones simply because they're already kind of sliced open. You can get to the meat and potatoes of the actual green bean. Um, I, I do get salt, no salt added every once in a while. This is no salt added. They're the same price. They're like 50 cents a can for the, the regular size can. So I don't know if it really matters. I've used both with no ill effects, so I definitely recommend your uh, your green beans for the um, your plecos, your shrimp, your snails, um, a lot of bottom feeders. Also, another uh, veggie that I've used before has been uh, peas. Now, with peas, you want to, you can use canned peas, but you want to shell them first, and I've used that actually um, to deal with some type of a bloat or indigestion. Uh, peas will provide some roughage, um, but with any food, especially a food like a pea or a green bean or zucchini, um, the downside to those foods is they can spoil fairly quickly. If you have a zucchini and you put like a big old piece of zucchini or drop a ton of green beans and your fish aren't eating them quick enough, you'll spoil your water very quickly with those foods. Um, even more so, I've found, than some of the uh, prepared foods. Um, so just keep in mind, just like any food, slow it first. And make sure your fish are going to eat it. Um, what's up, Roberto? RLC Aquatics, how you doing, man? Welcome. Speaking of um, food that does the opposite and will not spoil quick, quickly, one of my favorite foods, bar none, um, even when you include the price, which is not the cheapest food out there, is rapashi gel food. Now, usually the biggest knocks are it's expensive and it stinks and you have to make it. The scale that I make it, which is not huge, I make like a little, just like a, a plastic container of it this big or so. This is a, a Grindelworm culture that we'll get into in a minute. Um, but I usually make rapashi in about a container this big, and I slice it up really thin, and I feed it over the course of a few days to the tanks. But if you've never heard of it, definitely take a look into it if you have any kind of fish, really. They make different blends. Um, super green. I, I use them all, to be honest. This is like a staple Spawn and Grow is one that I've just got recently. I'm going to want to use this for my Apistos as well as for some of the live bears potentially. But I got the Community Plus, which obviously you can feed to community fish, but I feed it to the Plecos along with um, Morning Wood and Soiling Green. I'm like, I'm walking Rapashi salesman right now. 
But this is just literally what I buy. None of these foods were given to me. Well, I should say that uh, Aquarium Co-op sent me this um, in the mail, so I didn't pay for this. And I already mentioned that Cobalt Aquatics kind of, I guess they sponsored the Tampa Aquarium Club. So this was just a freebie kind of giveaway. Everything else I've paid for, um, my own money. So the Rapashi, I, I spend my money on it. I think it's worth it. And I'm very, very um, pleased with the results. Um, I feel that you know the Rapashi, the green beans, the zucchini, and the water changes are what allows me to get those plecos to you know, a decent size, inch and a half within two months. I think that's, um, I think that's all connected. Before I forget, we're giving away two t-shirts tonight. Um, I kind of, let's see if I can find the thing here. Um, the stream last week, we had a contest. You just have to go to that stream and um, leave a comment saying anything on that. And we're going to do a drawing here in a few minutes. Um, so if you, if you came for that, you don't have to be here. Uh, we're going to be doing that drawing here in a few. Um, so if you're wondering about that, sorry I didn't mention that earlier. Uh, we will be getting to uh, giving away two, two T-shirts um, tonight, and then we'll get them. We'll get them sent out here in the next few days, hopefully. Um, another another food I wanted to touch base with. I've never seen this except for it came with when I bought this at Jack Wally Discus. These discus granules, because I'd never tried any kind of granule food before. I hadn't tried the tetra, tetra tropical granules or anything, so I saw these. I had to pick them up. Um, it came with these, and this is like a, a soft line food, and this is interesting. I don't know if anyone's seen a food like this before. It's like little little tiny pellets. I know it's going to come out really bad. I'm going to risk dropping it all over my computer here. But they're like soft pellets. It's almost like, it's hard to explain. They're like little granules almost, but they're they're soft to the touch, almost like a, I don't know, like a, like a, a gummy bear. Not exactly a gummy bear, but interesting. My, my fish... They're called sinking sticks, sinking sticks, soft line America sinking sticks, um, and I've 41 percent protein. I I've enjoyed them. I've I found that the shrimp eat them. Um, you know they 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 sink, so they're best for bottom feeders. But you can get them. Um, I've I've gotten my cichlids to eat them as well as they're kind of sinking through the the water column. Um, we're gonna jump into some of the live foods and frozen foods here in a minute. <coughs> Excuse me. And yeah, let's talk about let's talk about the frozen foods, and then we'll jump into the live foods. The frozen foods, I kind of I don't have the actual frozen foods because I didn't want them to defrost. But um, some of the ones I use are the regular brine shrimp, which I think is awesome. I feed it to the African cichlids, the shell dwellers, the native fish, even the adult guppies will eat the these are like adult brine shrimp, and then they make a brine shrimp in different way so like there's a omega enriched brine shrimp okay as well as a spirulina brine shrimp and i like to feed this one especially to the african cichlids that are from lake tanganyika that are more of a um a vegetable eater they want more omnivorous so the brine shrimp every day may be a little too much so i use a spirulina brine shrimp or the omega enriched brine shrimp and what I do typically is feed these frozen foods typically for about four days a week. I'd say on average, the, the, the fish that get frozen food, get them four days a week. Um, I also do blood worms and then mysa shrimp. I know some people say like blood worms to be careful of. I, I feed them probably once or twice a week. I have no um, adverse effects. And actually the one I forgot to bring was the one that I probably feed the most, and that's the frozen Daphnia. Um, in my opinion, if you don't have live foods and you're trying to, yes, these are all Hikari brand. Um, as far as I know, that's what's sold mostly by me. I don't know if there's any other competitors, to be honest, in terms of these frozen foods. They have a pretty diverse diverse line. So um, Hikari, they seem to do a good job. I've had no issues. All my fish kind of devour all the frozen foods. I really like the Daphnia because... Since they're small, anyone can eat them, right? Now, your biggest fish don't really care about a tiny little Daphnia, but even some of your medium-sized cichlids and stuff will will eat Daphnia. So, in my opinion, 
when you know it's better to go with the smallest food that works for you because if it's you know daphnia and then 80 percent of your fish can eat it whereas i get these sinking you know these larger sinking pellets only so many fish can eat it i've got to crunch them up or you know they sink to the ground and then the pellets or the um the plecos kind of eat them as they soften up but in my opinion um in terms of size of food go with the the smallest one possible omega brand okay friday ron over at friday fish facts uh, San Francisco Bay is what's sold near me. Haven't been able to find a car. So maybe it's a... Because I know that uh, Friday Fish Facts, Ron, he's up in Vancouver. And Bay Area Aquatics, obviously Bay Area, San Francisco, Cali. So he... Um, they they find Omega One in San Francisco Bay. So it's interesting. Probably uh, just a, a regional thing. Um, I've had no issues with Akari. I would give the other ones a shot. Um, but I just don't, don't see them by me. Typically with the Rapashi and the Frozen Foods... What I was doing when I was just getting store credit for trading in the Plecos, I would buy the food. Um, but now, even though that I have uh, cash, I have to have my license, so they pay me cash, I still spend most of the money or a lot of the money that I get from selling the Plecos on the frozen foods, on the Rapashi. Um, typically, I think these are the store that I go to has these packages. I think they're only $5 a piece, $5.99 maybe, which is one of the better better prices by me i think they can be anywhere from five to even 7.99 i think some stores have them um, but there's a place uh i'll shout them out pepizar in castleberry um, in the orlando area that i believe these are only five dollars a piece which is the cheapest you can find them around and these um rapashi the small rapashi ones are 9.99 probably can't see that but they're 9.99 which i think is about the average price for these things um let's let's talk a little bit about the um, let's talk a little bit about live foods because that's really um, I th one I think is one of the best. And David Machado just said baby brine shrimp. Yes, baby brine shrimp is um, definitely one of the best live foods. And so, in my opinion, so is microworms. That's what this culture is right here. Um, you can kind of see there's all little microworms growing on the side. Uh, this culture I haven't fed from in a day or two. And I got a video out on how to culture these. They're really easy. This is in mashed potatoes. And to feed, you just literally kind of just can wipe your finger on there and, you know, dip it into the, the tank. So these are good for smaller fish because they're, they're pretty tiny. So you're talking about um, same fish that would like baby brine shrimp would go for these micro worms. Um, and possibly these might be even a little smaller than the baby brine shrimp. Um, Ryan is probably the best deal finder on YouTube when it comes to goods. <laughs> I try, man. I try, Roberto. Rob says, I'd feed my fish anything and everything. Yeah, I think it's important, man, to, to test things out and see what works for you, you know, within reason, dude. I don't know what you're feeding over there. <laughs> hey, Loach Guy, thanks for joining us. Um, I like blood worms to help trigger spawning, especially for quarries. Yeah, that's a really good point. Definitely with these frozen and live foods, if you're trying to breed, they are kind of like... They're kind of like the trick. If you're looking for a secret or a, a, a cheat code, so to speak, live foods and frozen foods for breeding are, are where it's at, man, or where it's at. Liquid nourish will be great in your microworm culture. Okay, we got to talk. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I've never heard of that, man. I'm, I'm intrigued now. I'm intrigued for sure. I'm going to get these uh, microworms all hyped up on this liquid nourish, and I'm going to feed those the guppies behind us. That's the tank that has um, the German ice blue guppies in it. And I just put a, a video out about all the different guppy strains I got. And I want to thank, I forgot their names, but two individuals pointed out that I have Hydra in that tank. So I've heard of Hydra before. I've dealt with Planaria before. I've never dealt with Hydra before. So I've got to uh, do some research and definitely figure out a little bit about that, uh, that Hydra and see what's going on in that tank. Uh, before we go any further, let's give away some t-shirts. I'm going to see if I can't hopefully do this right. Um, let me know in the chat if I, I'm going to go to the screen capture, but hopefully this works. Let's see here. So let me know. Hopefully, I got to go to the comments. Hopefully, we're not in like some craziness here. But we're going to go to screen capture and hopefully pick a winner 
I think the chances are pretty good, guys. Let's see here. There's 24 comments, so you got about a 1 in 12 chance to win a t-shirt. And let's scroll down here. Now, there were some pretty funny comments. I'm just going to do a random picker. I didn't know, no favoritism at all. And um, let's see who gets a t-shirt. We're going to pick two winners. The first winner is going to be, hope you guys can see this. First winner is Simply Nobody. I left a comment for the shirt. Well, Simply Nobody, you won a, sh you won a shirt with that comment. So congratulations, Simply Nobody. Um, let's pick another winner and see who else is going to be getting a shirt shipped to them. This is anywhere in the world. It is Jay Adams. Ryan, keeping it relaxed as usual. Good show. Give me a t-shirt. You got it, man. Uh, my fish would be a discus or a gulper cat to hide my belly. That's right. I'd ask you guys to um, to see. Let's see. Hopefully, you guys saw that. Hopefully, you guys saw that on there. Um, I had I had asked. I had asked. Um, let me see here. Go back. I had asked you guys to leave a comment. You could leave anything, but I said if you're gonna leave something funny, make me laugh. I appreciate it, and a bunch of you guys did. Um, there were some funny people saying what they would be as a fish for Halloween. Um, so he said, he said um, he wanted to be a gulper cat to hide his belly. I can definitely, I can definitely <laughs> get with that. Um, I've been working on my belly a little bit, but I've always been a, always been a big boned guy for sure. Um, I don't know if you guys are here tonight, but I'll. It doesn't matter if you're here or not. I'll reach out to you via comments, and we'll. And we'll do something again. Fancy Tales Aquatic says we saw nothing. <laughs> sure, sure, sure you did. I was hoping that would go well and not into some kind of like um, a, like a, a mirrored oblivion type deal. I'm still working out all this all this stream stuff. But they're going to go ahead and um, I'll, I'll reach out to them, comment on their comments, and get them a, a t-shirt hopefully. Oops, not that again. Get them a t-shirt hopefully shipped out to them. But let's... Let's take a little bit, or let's keep talking a little bit more about food. Who doesn't enjoy food? Actually, I got a question for you guys. I thought of this. This wasn't on my main question. Actually, I wrote it up here. This is the right. This is a writing question for myself that I thought of about five minutes before the stream tonight. And I, I thought, man, when I was growing up, I've always had dogs, which I don't know where they are tonight. Usually, they're making noise and fighting over bones. Um, I've always had dogs, and I have two right now. And I remember as a kid, people always like, oh, you want to try this treat or eat this dog food, and people would dare each other. So has anyone out there eaten fish food? I mean, I'm just curious to know. I, I, I'd admit it if I did. I, I'm pretty sure I probably ate a dog treat back in the day when I was a kid growing up. Someone dared me. Um, but I wonder if anyone's ever, like, you know, throw down a, a, a pleco wafer and just, you know, just to, just to see, just curious, just to see. Um, the only the only fish food I've ever eaten is the green beans. <laughs> maybe maybe I could be convinced for a good cause to try out a, a pleco wafer or something. I don't know about a, a, a meal of apache, how that would say how it would taste. Uh, Steve says not on purpose. I have eaten it on stream. Okay, Bob, you've eaten it on stream a few times. I'll have to check that out. <laughs> Curious as to what I feel like flate food might be the worst. Like flate food will get like all stuck in like this ugh. I feel like if you could eat a, a pellet, you could just swallow really quickly. Um, yeah, maybe we'll do a like a, or a pashi stream. We'll make a make a we'll eat your pashi with a knife and a fork. <laughs> um, but some of the other cultures I keep besides the microworms are grindle worms here, and this is one of the the bigger ones that I got cranking. Um, as you can see here, that's all worms, and what I like about this is it's relatively free. I mean. You feed them, um, I feed them bread. I've been feeding them a little crushed flake because I got a, some comments back, which I really appreciate you guys commenting and you know just adding more information. I'm always learning from you guys in the comments when I make a video. Um, I'm not an expert on a lot of these things. I've accumulated a little bit of in, information and knowledge over the last few years, but you know I really appreciate when I make a video and people are pointing out things and just you know showing me showing me more um, just tips and different ways, better ways to improve things. But Grindle Worms are awesome. They're bigger than Micro Worms. Um, these things will be live for sale on wildfishtanks.com very soon. I've been just, you know, cranking up the cultures, making sure I have enough 
because first and foremost, I need to make sure my fish have enough to eat. These guys, they reproduce fairly quickly. Um, typically, they're kind of slow to get going, and then they start cranking. I have been keeping them in cultures like this size, which are fine for me and fine for most people. But if I want to start, you know, you know, sharing the love of these Grindel worms, I need to start with cultures. And I got a few other ones this size are a little bigger, um, just to kind of get them, get them real cranking. A tablespoon of powder rapashi. Now that sounds disgusting. I've eaten milk bones on one than, more than one occasion. Yeah, milk bones definitely. That sounds like a something I probably did as a as a on a dare. Uh, Diana Barclay, I want the shirt, please. Ne next time we'll give away some shirts, hopefully in the future. Um, but yeah, I ate a bag of begging strips. Ooh, now that see a milk bone. I feel like that that's doable. A bag and strips, especially a bag of bag and strips, man. I feel like that's just. You may think, oh, well, they taste like bacon, but they probably taste like the nastiest artificial bacon ever, man. Ugh. I've tried rapashi crested gecko food, the fruit flavor. Hey, at least it was the fruit flavor, right? <laughs> you have to make that stuff outside. Yeah, I mean rapashi. I don't know. Maybe maybe I maybe my nose has kind of gone numb to rapashi because I don't I mean I don't use the same containers. Uh, once I I have like a dedicated rapache container, don't get me wrong, um, but I uh, I've kind of grown to just I guess live with the rapache smell. Soylent green by accident. Don't cook supper and rapache at the same time. Does it look that good? Does the rapache look that good? I mean, it's it's a good food, but ugh. Um, other other live foods I do are vinegar eels, which are even smaller than the micro micro worms. And vinegar eels are super, super simple to culture. Um, they're really good for as a starter. And we were talking about brine shrimp. Um, obviously, one of the downsides of brine shrimp is you kind of set it up and typically you let it run its course for a few days. But it's widely accepted as the best food, especially when you're trying to breed and raise fish. And that's what I want to talk about a little bit. We're going to talk about a little bit of frequency of feeding and feeding on vacation and whether to automate. I'm going to adjust a little bit, stretch out my leg. But... Um, about breeding versus just keeping. If you're just keeping, you know, fish, you don't need frozen foods. You don't need live foods. I'm sure they would be appreciative of it. But if you're trying to breed fish, it is literally night and day for most species of fish if you uh, use uh, frozen foods or live foods. It triggers something. I'm not a scientist. I'm just going off my experience. You know, not that I've bred all the fish in the world. However, when I seem to introduce... Uh, live black worms especially have gotten uh, triggered a lot of fish to breed. You heard individuals talk about um, blood worms and how they can trigger, um, you know, corridors especially to breed. I find that to be the case. Sorry, I'm moving all this fish food out of the way. Um, the dogs have kind of wanted to join us, I guess. That's okay, buddy. He's scared of all the, the foods on the, on the floor. But, you know, when it comes to breeding if you're having issues breeding and you're not feeding live or frozen foods, I definitely recommend doing that before you try some other things. Um, it's just, to me, it's like a, it's a game changer. It's okay, buddy. Bobo, come here. The big boy, he's, he's right here. He's right off the screen, but he's, it's okay, buddy. Come here. <laughs> he's scared of cat. He's scared of everything. Um, so, and, and, and when you're raising fish, it's more crucial. Like, so conditioning fish to breed them is one thing. You know, live foods definitely help. When you're raising certain fish, it's a necessity. Uh, Simply Nobody and Jay Adams. Simply Nobody and Jay Adams were the winners. So I'll reach, I'll reach out to them. Um, yeah, I'll reach out to them. But the um, baby brine shrimp, microworms, vinegar eels for your newborn guppies, for your newborn corydoras, for your newborn rainbow fish. The smaller the fish or the smaller the eggs, the more crucial it's going to be. Um, David says water changes are what triggers the quarries to breed. I feel that same way about the plecos. Um, the plecos, a little cooler water change, I found that to be um, spot on for me. I've heard people talk about it, but I can say that without a doubt, like the super reds in that 29-gallon tank, I've seen mama be you know fat and thick and then... You know, I was like, oh, man, let me do a nice, good 50 60% cooler water change. And um, that was enough to do it. Finally, the dog, he's getting a little less a little less scared. He's still still scared <laughs> of all the all the 
the stuff that's going on over here. <laughs> Everything I turn this I turn this room into a a disaster when I do these streams. The the living room is still kind of torn up from the uh, from the water leak we had. The non aquarium water leak. The plumbing plumbing water leak that we had. Um, so we're we're in here. In terms of uh, frequency, if we're talking about if we're talking about um, baby fish, the more frequent the better. Um, this is something I heard Corey say the other day that some most fish eat and get rid of it within two hours. Um, so my baby fish, like the baby guppies I have right now, when I'm home, I'm, I feed usually like right in the morning before I go to work, right when I get back from work, and then um, right at um, before I go to bed. So at least at least three times, and most days actually I get to come home for lunch, so I will feed then too, or on days I get to work from home, I'll feed five times a day, um, six times a day even. I've I've made the rounds and I alternate. Typically, how I do it is, you know, in the morning I'm usually just feeding dry food, and usually it's the lunch feeding or one of the two later feedings where I'm doing more of the um, the live foods and the um, the frozen foods especially usually have more time in the evening to kind of put the frozen food let it defrost a little bit it's an extra step and then rapashi usually I make ahead of time it doesn't take a long time but it takes a good you know five you just gotta boil water and stir it in and then let it sit so it just takes it takes a few minutes um, how many um, how much cooler I've heard anywhere from two to five degrees we're talking about you know, the water changing um, I've, I, I typically will go for five degrees, you know, uh, I, I, I haven't had any issues with that. Um, five degrees for me has done it. I don't, I don't get too precise. Um, lumpy dog says, do you still have the African butterfly cichlids? How big are they? Yes and no. So I have the male African butterfly cichlid, but I lost all the fry and the female, um, when the fry were still young. And that may have been my only loss due to cool weather. I'm not sure this is still this is going to be like last either the end of last year or beginning of this year so like December January type area I got them to breed and then within a few months a month or two I lost a female and all the fry unfortunately so I just have the uh, the male African butterfly cichlid but it was definitely the black worms that got them to breed 100% the black worms got them to breed um, do you normally water change with straight cold tap water or try to match I don't have access too hot in my fish room so in the tank in here and the tank in the inside I oh, the tank in here I use buckets still but I'll match the water um, I have other tanks where I use a Python water change system so I'll match the water from the sink and get get it running the same temperature but in the fish cave um, and you'll see a video actually coming out Friday um, had another disaster in the fish cave unfortunately I wiped out an entire grow out tank of plecos um, 60 60 plus Calico, bristlenose plecos, they were only three weeks old, a month old tops, as well as some snails. And I think it was due to a water change. Uh, if you guys have been following me for a while, the only thing I had like this was last year. I did a water change, and I think the water was too hot. And I killed a bunch of Pechacola in my front room tank. Um, so, yeah, it's not a, not a pretty video that's coming out. But um, I'm going to share with you guys anyway because it is what it is. And that's, you know, what I do, share the good and the bad. But I believe that was due to me changing too much at once. I, I did like an 80% water change. I wasn't planning on it. Um, but yeah, in the, in the garage, I, I literally, I use the, the, the hose. I usually typically will use the hose. And I do 30 to 40% water changes. And I'll do it with safe instead of like a prime. It's like as safe as like the powdered version of prime. And I'll add some at the beginning and near the end of each tank. And I've been doing it that way, having no issues. Um, because of what happened recently, I'm probably going to switch that up a little bit because I've, you know, realized that I've left myself open to uh, potential potential issues. Um, after water change, do you plug in heater? How long should you wait to plug in heater to bring it back to regular temp? Um, typically, I plug in the heater right after the water change. Uh, definitely want to unplug the heater during a water change because if that water temp or water level drops below. You can cook that heater, um, so you definitely do want to turn off. I usually just turn off everything to the tank. Like on this tank over here, I have everything plugged into a power strip. I just turn off the power strip and 
then it can um, it turns the power strip, and that way I, I know I'm good. The, the filter's not running and going to run dry. The heater's not running and going to heat up. So I just kind of, uh, as a safety measure, do all that. <coughs> How's it going, Tom? Team Aquatics. A beast heart. Yeah, it does suck. You know, it's my fault at the end of the day, but, you know, it is what it is. I've got Calico Plecos. Calico Plecos, they're one of my favorites. I like them a lot. I love my Super Reds, but those Calicos are, are really nice. Uh, what's up, Rack? River Life, how's it going? So, on the feedings, like I said, the babies as much as possible. Frozen, I do four days a week or so. With my shrimp, typically with my shrimp tanks, what I like to do is I skip a day or two. So my shrimp usually get fed once a day. Sometimes on a rare occasion, I'll do twice a day. If I put like a little bit of food, I notice it's gone, I'll put in some more. But I recommend feeding, that's what I do with my shrimp, usually once a day, and I'd say only five, six days a week. And that's, you know, they, they're booming. You know, my, most of my shrimp populations are doing more than fine. Um, so I, overfeeding shrimp is definitely a, a no-no. If you're looking for a dry fry food, Google Golden Pearls. Yeah, Golden Pearls is another one. I, sh I actually have some in the fridge. Um, I haven't used that recently, but Golden Golden Pearls is a great food. Uh, my first experience with that was when I got those Rainbow Fish eggs from Tom over at Team Aquatics last year. He actually hooked me up with some Golden Pearls in a little vial, and then I went and I purchased some additional Golden Pearls. So, yeah, Golden Pearls is like a very, very fine powder food. So it's... Um, it's, it's, it's tremendous for your very small newborn baby fish like the rainbow fish. Um, I want to add another Pleco to my tank. What kind of Pleco are you looking at? A bushy nose Pleco, an L number Pleco, green Phantom, blue Phantom. Um, super reds are hard to find where I am. Yeah, I find that there's like, there's pockets, you know. They're not all over the place by me. You know, I, I'm, I think one other guy does supply some of the pet stores. But I'm pretty much the guy who supplies the pet stores by me in terms of Super Reds. And, you know, I'm, I'm sure other people around me have them. But um, I don't think they're very, very prevalent. Um, pet Sidex says, how do I contact you? Um, you can reach me at wildfishtank.com. It's not, pl not plural, wildfishtank. Or wildfishtank at gmail.com. Wildfishtank at gmail.com is my email address. So you can um, hit me up there. Yeah, wildfishtanks.com is the website, but wildfishtank at gmail.com is email. Um, I know Joe Coffee said he's 40 minutes late. Aquafunk just rolled in. He was editing and lost track. It's all good, man. Editing, you got to, you know, your channel, you got to edit, man. Editing is, uh, is very important for all you aspiring YouTubers out there. It's not the, not the fun part for some people, but it's a necessary evil, I guess you could say. But you can have some fun editing. It's definitely, you can have some fun with it. Um, how much do we sell Goldenback Neon Shrimp for? Selling to LFS. Okay, that's a good question. Um, it all depends on your area. I typically am anywhere between a third to a half of what they're going to be able to sell at retail. And I'll even do a recommended retail. I'll tell someone, you know, I recommend you retail this at this, you know, if they don't know. You know, I've had some of the places I've gone with my Super Reds, they weren't really sure what to retail them at. And I'll tell them, you know, try this. I think this is a good number. And then usually I'm working out somewhere between half to a third of what they're going to resell at. Because obviously they have, you know, their expenses. They got to make some money. So um, if they can sell that shrimp in the store for a yellow shrimp at a retail store, maybe it's 10 bucks, 8, 10 bucks. I've seen them at Pet Supermarket, I think, for like 10, 11, 12 bucks before. Um, but yeah, just, just try to, you know, try to pitch them like a half or a third of that. And that's typically the going the going rate. Um, what food is the best for goldfish? I have tried different types of pellets, but no success. I have a combination of common goldfish and oranges. Oh, maybe I wish Don over at NY Gold was in the chat. I don't have a ton of experience with goldfish. I know that when I had goldfish temporarily a few months ago, I had them for a few weeks, I fed them uh, flake food, and they did fine. I think I primarily fed them flake food, and they were little hungry, hungry hippos. Um, I know goldfish also will eat plants. When I had koi and goldfish temporarily, they'll eat duckweed and um, other plants. Obviously, you don't want to get expensive plants to feed them to your goldfish. But something like a duckweed, which most people will consider like a, um, a pest, 
you can go ahead and and uh, try and see if they'll they'll eat that also. Um, as far as the pleco, I'm going to check out your site. Yeah, man, I appreciate it. We got some we got some uh, we got some uh, fish for sale for sure. Wildfishtanks.com. Lumpy Dog says when Funk says editing, I don't think he means editing. <laughs> That's very very possible. Hey Funk, man, we were talking about eating fish food. We were, we were talking about eating fish foods. Um, somebody tells me you've eaten some fish food before. We were talking about different fish foods that we've uh, we've eaten. I'm curious as to if, you, if you've ever had any fish food yourself, Jay. Um, Raul's Aquatics, Wild Fish Tank at Gmail. You got it, man. That's it. That's correct. Wild Fish Tank at Gmail. You got it. Um, tuning in from South Korea. It's good to catch a live stream. Keep doing what you do. Hey, Lou Her. Well, welcome. That's awesome. That's pretty much almost probably all the way across the world. That's that's phenomenal. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, the Funk is the man of the hour. <laughs> funk is the man of the hour anywhere he goes, man. Funk is always a good time, man. Funk is Funk is a good guy. Funk is is cool to hang out with. Jay's Jay's good people's for sure. Uh, duckweed is a great food source. Yeah, fish tropic. That's how my buddy and I are my crazy tilapia breeding uh, debacle, which is in part the reason why you're seeing me, why I even have a YouTube channel. My buddy and I, about three plus years ago, um, were going to try to raise tilapia sustainably and feed them high quality foods. And we wanted it, it was a business, so we wanted to, you know, did, didn't want to have a lot of expense in terms of fish food. And we heard that, you know, duckweed grows like crazy. So we got some tilapia and we got some duckweed. We got the duckweed, or we got the tilapia to breed like crazy. Couldn't grow the duckweed for anything. And now I got it all over the place. But back then, I couldn't grow the duckweed. If you paid me, I couldn't grow it. And we got tilapia growing like crazy. Uh, needless to say, it, it, didn't, uh, it didn't work out tremendously. But there's a, there's a fun video on it. Uh, take it easy, Ron. Enjoy. Enjoy soccer, man. Hope you guys have a good game. Jay Adams, man, you're late to the party. But uh, congratulations, you won a T-shirt. Um, I'll, I'll reach out to you or send me an email or I'll comment on your comment. On your comment. But um, I've heard the fat types of goldfish, it's best to use sinking. Uh, maybe that works. You know, either way, you're, you're, hearing, you're hearing from a guy who just won a t-shirt. Um, Aquafunks, if you said, if you're just joining the chat, hit that thumbs up. Yeah, I appreciate it, guys. If you're still here, hit that thumbs up joining us. It really does help. It really does help. Um, all right, all right. Fish on Tank Tactics. Hey, man. All right, all right. You guys always comments, all right, all right. <laughs> I don't know if that's a Matthew McConaughey thing or what, but uh, let's uh, let's talk a little bit more about feeding on vacation. If you're gonna feed, you know, fish foods on vacation, I recommend not or just using one of those vacation feeders. Um, they're actually pretty good for snails and shrimp, but in my opinion, if you're gonna be gone for like a week, even five days a week, I wouldn't even feed. Um, in terms of automating foods, I'm not a huge fan of automating foods either um, because because it's just I, I can't really I, I like to see how much food is going into my tanks and adjust accordingly and I don't write it down but I have a good idea of like okay I fed this much and they ate it in this amount of time um, and the automatic feeders I, I guess they have their purpose but I do the automatic water changes but with the feeding I kind of like to have that um, you know be a manual thing where I'm actually you know, getting involved with the tanks and witnessing it and seeing them eat the food or not eat the food and how much they're eating. Um, so automating feeding, and, and you also really can't automate feeding with the good stuff, right? You can't really automate live foods or frozen foods. If you can, let me know. Um, but if you can automate lives or frozen foods, I think I definitely would, um, you know, consider it. But once again, I think there's something to be said about not, not automating the food, not automating the feeding. Um, I did taste some DIY fish food out of curiosity on my live stream. Okay. So I guess this is more of a thing than I thought. Steam Font was saying that he had he had tried some Apache as a powder, which to me is like even worse. Like I'd rather I'd rather eat the prepared stuff than eat the powder. Because like it's gonna start like in your mouth turning into just ugh. Um, <laughs> I must be smart. I won the t shirt. Yes. <laughs> um, any veggie based any veggie based food for goldfish yeah i think you know veggies are, are great for goldfish whether they you know plants obviously are type of vegetable um i wonder if goldfish would eat green beans never tried it but i'd be curious to see um 
Chewy says, join your local aquarium side and ask the buddy to come over to keep on iron your place. It works out great that way. That's a great tip. Um, I, I, uh, I am a part of the Tampa Bay Aquarium Society, and I recommend that you guys definitely seek out any potential aquarium club, organization, show that's by you. I'm looking forward to next Saturday, November next Saturday, November 16th. The um, Tampa Bay Aquarium Society is having a your annual auction. So I've been, I didn't make it there last year. I've only been a member since the beginning of this year. So I'm super excited to attend my first annual auction. I went a little crazy buying guppies at the guppy show. So we'll see We'll see what happens at the annual auction. Um, I had an alert set for the live cast, but my silly desktops didn't notify me because I was playing a game. What do you play? You're a gamer. I used to, I'm, I'm a hardcore gamer nerd. Um, I haven't played in forever. I, I'm a PC gamer mostly. I'm a big fan of like MMORPGs. Um, it's actually maybe one day I'll tell a story about how um, Corey and I kind of actually met, and it involves MMORPGs, an old school one called EverQuest. You guys probably heard of World of Warcraft. You may have never heard of EverQuest, but yeah, that was a, something else we geeked out on. So I think there's a there's definitely a, a, a fish nerds and gamer nerds. It's not a hundred percent overlap, but there's definitely some overlap there for sure. Um, the Greater Houston Aquarium Club. Had to do a shout out. Okay, yeah, Great Houston Aquarium Club. Shout out there. CCAC, I think it's the Circle City Aquarium Club, which is uh, up in Indianapolis. I definitely want to visit Indianapolis, not only because, not only because I'm, uh, <clears throat> not only because I'm a Colts fan, but great city. And uh, Rob 93 is up there. It'd be cool to tour his fish room. And Circle City Club is pretty cool. Um, LRB's up there, and Abel Aquatics. It'd be cool to go hang out with them. Um, yeah, Chewy, I'm lucky down here. We got a bunch of cool fish nerds down here in Florida. Um, Jay Adams says, most fish are fine several days. Yep, it's very true. Today is my birthday. Happy birthday, Carlos Taylor. Happy birthday, man. There was someone that has birthdays at the office today. We had a little thing at the office for uh, one of the ladies. So happy, happy birthday, Carlos. Um, let's see here. Tampa Bay Aquarium Society. Thank you. Thank you, Candy. There's something I missed, I thought. Last week, I saw something about an auto-frozen food feeder. That'd be interesting. Scott Backer, man, if you remember where that was, I'd be curious to hear about that because um, I've never never seen that before. What's up, buddy? What's the play? It's Bobo. This is a good boy. This is my 80-pound lap dog that everyone thinks is like a vicious guy, but the truth is you got to be worried about his tail. His tail is vicious. He's going to knock over my cultures. Good boy, Bobo. But he's scared. He's a he's a scary cat. He's scared of everything. <laughs> but he's a sweetheart. He turns two next month. Um, let's see here. If you come to Indy, you can have some of my Limia Negro fasciata. Okay, you're an Indy too, Jay. That's awesome, man. And then there was someone who was played AQ. Okay, I played AQ EQ for ten years and Eve for like four. That's all. I never got into Eve, but my buddy still like updates his Eve stuff. You, you can, like, go and research stuff and, like, takes, like, three weeks to research one ability or something. That's crazy. Um, but, yeah, I'm definitely a big gamer nerd. I don't game as much as I used to, but definitely a big gamer nerd. Any clubs in the Sarasota area? No, but Sarasota's close enough to Tampa Bay Aquarium Society, man. If you live in Sarasota, you need to hit up Tampa Bay Aquarium Society. Um, and also, you got some cool fish, um, fish farms in your backyard. Bioaquatics is out there in Sarasota. There's a few other few other fish farms out there in Sarasota. Lumpy Dog says he pre-portions his fish food into smaller plastic cups. I usually have someone to feed every other day or every third day, no problem. That makes sense. If you're gonna have someone do it, it's probably best to scale it back. You know, it'd be ridiculous to try to have them do it on uh, the same schedule as you. You know, so it makes sense. Excuse me. You need to start one here in Orlando, Florida, a fish club. I've thought about it, but I don't know. I don't. I don't see myself doing it. I'm content right now. Um, it's me and some of the friends that I've that we go collecting with. We've we've talked about it. Um, there's there's a few of us that have, you know considered it. I just think it's a lot. It's it's a lot. A lot of time. A lot of energy. And I don't think that I could commit to that right now. But I, I'd be nice. I mean, if there was some, if there was one here in Orlando, you damn skippy, I'd support it. I'd be a member and I'd be there. If not every time, you know, almost every time for sure. Um, I just don't know that I'm going to be the one to start it. 
How about a shout out to the Canadian Association of Aquarium Clubs, like my buddy? Yeah, for sure. Big fan of uh, you know those guys up north. Um, I know Ron. Ron is a, a friend of mine who's up in Vancouver. Home Aquarium Society, the Calgary Aquarium Society. Yeah, big shout out to Calgary Aquarium Society and the Canadian Association of Aquarium Clubs. Um, let's see here. Okay, heard about it on Aquarium Co-op's last live stream. Someone mentioned it. Okay. Well, I'm sure if, if Corey finds out, he'll bring it in. I'm sure he'll, he'll if, if there's one there, he can play with it or make it good. I'm sure, I'm sure he'll do it, you know. Um, I know people that have actually got divorces from playing too much Evercrack. I don't doubt it, man. I don't doubt it, man. It's just like, if you guys are anything, I'll we'll go into that a little bit. There's like a, a, a thing called P99, which is literally like EverQuest the way it was back in 1999. And I've played a little bit of that with some of my friends. And it's hard to do it a little bit. It's hard to get in, just dip your toes, because it's a slippery slope, guys. It's a slippery slope. I mean, clearly, I have an addictive personality. I got 40 freaking fish tanks in my garage. So, yeah, a, a game that really requires you to kind of go all in and grind 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 isn't always the best it's fun it's a ton of fun but uh it's a big commitment big commitment indeed um the next stream uh we're gonna have another stream next wednesday 8 p.m eastern time we're gonna be talking about uh low tech planted tanks and kind of beginner planted tanks and some of the tips that i've used for my success and how i think you could set yourself up for success in your planted tanks um Next, coming up here in a few minutes, Dan's Fish is having a live stream. He's going to be discussing, I forget what his topic is today. He's giving away a, a fish. I think it's a Rasbora tonight. So definitely head on over to Dan's Fish after we wrap up here in a, in a few. Uh, but it was really cool to talk to you guys a little bit about the fish food, a little bit about the gaming. Um, really cool that some people checked in from Canada, as always. And then we had someone from South Korea. Um, if you guys are ever watching... And even if you're from here in Orlando, Sarasota, it's nice to know. Um, but especially the more um, unique areas, it's really cool just to kind of, you know, how we how we can connect like that for sure. Um, played it for a year. Yeah, it's it's difficult. Tampa's too far. It is far. Tampa is far. Um, I'd, I'd like to uh, – I'd like one closer. Don't get me wrong. I'd like one closer, but I'd suck it up. Bob, thank you for stopping by. Duke City, thank you for stopping by, man. Keep up the great work. Really been enjoying your videos lately. Lumpy Dog says, nice stream. Good night from London. Fantastic. Hey, yeah, guys. I appreciate you guys joining me. You know, like I said, next Wednesday, we'll be talking about planted tanks at 8 p.m. Eastern time. As always, for myself and Bo, stay positive and stay passionate, guys.